Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Patrick Cristiano, your host, the publisher of TheaterLife.com, a website for theater buffs covering Broadway and off-Broadway theater. And we're coming to you from the LTV studio where I have really special guests, my friends, my longtime friends, Amy Zerner and Monty Farber. Oh, welcome, Amy and Monty. Thank you so much, Patrick. Oh, I always love talking to you. And I love talking to you. Because <laughs> you understand creativity and that's all we're involved with. Oh, love is what you're involved with. It's That's really right. love is the source to everything that you guys do. Yeah. They, 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 uh, together they form the enchanted world. That's our brand. <laughs> That's your brand. Yeah. Uh, and but they have, you have over how many books in print? Over three million now. And and how many different titles? Uh, close to fifty in, in eighteen languages. Some of them we that came out a long time ago, we reconfigure and put them out again in a different way. Because we're always learning, we're always growing, so when we learn more, we put more into it. Also, sometimes <laughs> we've been ahead of our time. Uh, you have always been ahead of your time. Not yeah. sometimes, always. Thank You're you. always one step ahead. So that's a blessing and a curse sometimes, because people don't get it, but then 10 years later they get it. So. <laughs> We put it out again. <laughs> yeah, I contend that Amy is the bravest artist in the world because to do beautiful spiritual art that conveys information, it's true to science and quantum physics at a time in history where most other art doesn't do that. She, and she's been doing this since I met her in 1974. Now, you, now you, two, you, 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 you two are, are married, a couple, for over 40, how many years? 50 40? years. We're 50. coming up on 50 in October. But it's, it's how long have you been doing the, the, the metaphysical, First spiritual First book books? came out in 88, so, but it was sold in, in 86. You know, it takes a while to do a book. Right. And that's what the Creativity Oracle is all about, to help people who are trying to get a, a project off the ground or, or just get in touch with their creativity as being a parent mm -hmm. or, or anything. That's, mm -hmm. that's what it's about. Well, we've learned so much because I'm a fashion designer and an artist. They're all started with me being. And I, I want to mention too, you have an outfit of your own design this, this on is, because I loved it as soon as you walked in. Thank you, you always you always look good. This is I, a simple one. I do very elaborate ones, but I make what I love, and then sometimes other people like it too. And, you, and the tapestries that you do. You, they're, yes. you're, they're, I, I just I wanted was something I wanted to read from here. I forget what it was. Uh, the titles of all your books there were some of them. There's a lot. I mean. <laughs> There's only a few mentioned here, but I think you hit some of the things that I wanted to talk about, 18 languages and yes. almost 3 million books and so many titles. Yes. We've been very lucky, but we work very hard. And it's luck and preparation <laughs> meeting. <laughs> so. But it, it's it's our way of life. It's Monty's writing. It's my art combined. Every day we have a brainstorm and ideas and to do what you love. You're in the flow. Life is the best. You do what you love. Yeah, too. but when you're in the flow like that, you do get ideas constantly. They yes. just they pop yeah. up out, out of the presence of being immersed in what you're doing. Yes. But we know that the people we work with are artists in their own right, like our publishers and the editors and, and the designers. I mean, everybody has the potential to be an artist. The Creativity Oracle came about because our editor said to us while we were working on Amy's art book, Enchanted Worlds, he said, you should do a creativity oracle. I mean, it was that that kind of collaboration that you once you get everybody's juices flowing, creative juices. So, flowing. so we're gonna we're gonna do it. So okay. we ran into each other at the at the author's, author's, author's night, night last night yesterday yeah. afternoon where you have where you come every year and it's wonderful. We and, do a book a year. And I had an opening that happened, somebody canceled. So you're we're here spontaneously. We thought <laughs> it would be we thought it would More be fun uh, to do the creativity oracle. Uh, you explain it to everybody, and so then I'll pick I have the card. The cards. There are eighty cards, all with my art on it, and then each card has a message that Monty wrote. And there's a full book that you're holding that comes with it. Now this book explains it all to you, right? Yeah. So yes. it's a uh, it's a creative prompt. Say you're working on writing a book or writing a play. Sometimes we get stuck. Sometimes we want to need to pivot. Sometimes. Even in the marketing. What about what? What about the just? So suppose I want to ask a question about the putting it together. Yes. Not 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 necessarily the creative thoughts, but the the, the behind the scenes management of how you make yes. this 
actually manifest itself. So if that's your next step, it really is about the steps. So mm -hmm. tell me about, let's pick a card. So we're going to ask myself what the next step is? Yes. Wait, yes. we can't put this back in. This is pause, which can be the most dangerous card in the deck, because <laughs> sometimes people pause and never go back. <laughs> we, we address all the challenges of the creative process. So, so I'm asking myself, in this this creative process, this creative, creative project mm -hmm. that I'm working on, I'm next asking step? what's the next step for me to do? To and I, I, I put a lot of stuff into work already into okay. making it manifest and I'm visualizing That's manifesting a perfect it. Question, example. Okay. Yeah. So what is the next step for me? <laughs> He's so cute. Ooh, good one. Ooh, <laughs> what is that? Get? Courage. Uh, yeah. Well, that's very important in the creative process, yeah. right? We all sometimes reach a point where you have to be brave to present it, to market it, to so pitch it. So what it said, yes, exactly. It says have the courage to see the lessons in all situations and face them constructively. Yeah. So it means to t transform negativity into positivity and is what they say. Look at the picture. It's a big cat. And oh, we always yeah. think cats represent confidence and courage. Don't look too much. But I think sometimes, you know, the, there are parts of the creative process that are more fun than others. So, you know, you've probably done the fun part. Right. <laughs> and now maybe some of the next steps aren't as fun, but you're going to do it. No, and, and that, but the, what's so ironic about it, the, the next step and what, what I asked about are all the things that I lack the courage in a little bit that no, I'm that you, I'm on, you that, stand that, on a stage. No, yeah, but this but now we're talking about the background and talking to all the people that make things happen. Yeah, uh, and but they're artists too. That's the whole point of this thing. But again, you have to be good at all those things. Or right. Learn to be good because yeah. I I remember when I know so many artists like who say I wish somebody could do that for me. But to learn to do it for yourself is the strongest place yes. to come from. Yeah. yeah, and people sometimes will say, "Oh, you're so lucky you have Monty," but Amy does most of the work in our family. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned to do things I didn't like to do, and I've learned to like them. We, we, we have a little video. Let, let's show it real quick. A little video. Okay. Of, I, I, the, tell me if we're correct, because you put this together for us, right? Because or, we do so many different things, so I have a little bit of so, everything. So this is a little, do. this is a little, like, uh, montage. montage of the, Amy and Monty working. Uh, and all different projects that they do, and you're going to narrate it okay. uh, to tell us what you you know what, okay. at, when appropriate. You'll, you'll you'll know how to do it. Don't so, blink if it's about me working. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a little montage of Amy and Monty working with uh, a Amy uh, narrating it. <laughs> well, these are all the books that we do, and they're all oracles and different um, creative projects. That was me with one of my tapestries. This is an exhibit. That I had, that's Monty dancing. <laughs> you should have blinked for that. Astrology is, is a big subject that we deal with. And even Monty takes the pictures and does a lot of the filming. It's me, I'm a fashion designer too. And Monty does a lot of private consultations. You see my jewelry design. I forgot you designed jewelry too. Oh <laughs> and my Monty's God. Monty's a musician. And Amy is exclusive to Bergdorf's for over 20 years. That's Amy eating. She's good at that. <laughs> well, we wrote a cookbook. That's why that's... <laughs> you wrote a cookbook, too? Yes. I didn't know that. And this is one of the biggest tapestries I ever did. And this I is... love this. This is so much fun. We're hanging it up in my And studio. fast forward. Fast yes. fit. It's <laughs> nine, by, 9 by 12. It's, so we do it all. And I think um, a lot of artists have to embrace that. You know, you do everything from wrapping up the packages to schlepping to... <laughs> <laughs> So these are the creativity cards that we were talking about. So everything that we've learned in all the aspects of our business, we put into the creativity oracle. And so that, there's a time for success, and there's a time you need to draw on your willpower, time not to worry, time to take risks. And there's you know 80 options. And it's always right. That's how oracles work. It's always what you need to hear. And I learned uh, the creative project and the creative process from the best because Amy and her mother, Amy's from a family of artists, so when I met her, she already knew how to be an artist, <laughs> and so I learned. You know, and These are all the oracle cards? Is that they're, yes. they're yeah, you're eating cards. They're and you designed them all, too. Yes. I mean, I mean, they don't just write all this stuff. They do all the imagery of it, the pictures, the, the artwork. Um, 
And it's what to be mindful of in this moment when you pick a card. And we're the OG Oracle people because we've been doing this since 1988. And a lot of our books are still in print from the 80s and 90s. But this was this was wonderful because of good flow. Of, Thank of, you. <laughs> because sometimes people want to put you in a box, right? You know, whatever you you are, whatever you do, you I know you do a lot of different things. You write, you act, you do oh, real estate <laughs> for yes. over thirty years. You know, yeah, exactly. And I think, uh, people forget that. Yes, <laughs> yes. No, it's it's true. And plus, you you've seen changes in your industry too, just as we have. When we first started, there weren't too many people doing oracles, and now sort of everyone has an oracle deck. <laughs> so we're just kind of cool. We're glad well, affirmations or are, are affirmations. I mean, and Amy was the first person to put little rituals in the tarot book. That's why it's called the Enchanted Tarot. It has enchanted um, rituals to do for each card. And now it's kind of an accepted. Fact. Yes. Well, yoga is huge. Yes. <laughs> Meditation. I mean, we were talking about that. How you have to have a spiritual practice, and this. This becomes part of a spiritual path. And in 1988, when Karma Cards came out, there was a big discussion at Penguin Books about whether to call it Karma Cards because nobody would know what karma is. Now everybody knows what karma is. <laughs> what year was that? 1980, well, it was 87. That's when it was still being manufactured. But it came out in 88, and it's still going. It, that's the one, actually, that's in the most language. And, and then when you hear all the young people talking today, they all have adapted the language, oh, yeah. the spiritual language and understanding the energy and stuff like that. They and know people, their astrology charts. They've uh, been to a psychic. They, it's normal. You know, yeah. I, I used astrology as a kid to help me wow. get a better understanding of who I was. Not, that's not exactly not, what not, it's best for you. Just, yeah. just, to get ten, just showed yes. me tendencies yes. that, that I saw. Yes. And, it yes. was, and I thought it was fascinating. And it was my first... I guess dip into metaphysics. Meta metaphysics. Yeah. You took the word right out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah, I was late to the party. Uh, when I met Amy in 1974, she was studying astrology. I was studying Amy, so I learned astrology because I <laughs> thought of myself. Say that again. You were studying Amy. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, You're studying all... paid off. <laughs> yeah. I like marriage. What I, learned. <laughs> I always... think it's a, it's a path we're on that's a lifelong path. You're always learning. From observing people, and you have to be interested in people yes. to be interested in astrology. You're interested in yourself and how the world works, and how other people work, and how individual we all are. As human beings, and accept yes. everybody's individuality yes. too. Right. And it's a conscious journey, and most yes. people, so a lot of people, don't choose to be conscious. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed. That. I, know. I know you told me you don't listen to any of the election stuff. <laughs> Trouble with spirituality is a lot of people lose their sense of humor when they start getting into it. You have to have a sense of humor about life because we're all in this together. Well, because the journey, I mean, because the real purpose is joy. Exactly. Yeah. Which so, comes back to the creativity. It's like playing. Really, right. it's, a, it's being in touch with your inner child and that spark, you know, what sparks joy and what sparks your interest. Being in touch with the inner child, that's yes. a really, you know, it's like you, you just said you were late to the party yes. in terms of learning about metaphysics because I thought it was you know I thought it was what was in the newspapers astrology yeah. when there were newspapers <laughs> so what, I, 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 I'm late to the party in terms of meditating and mm -hmm. I was sharing this with you just recently even though my journey has been conscious and metaphysical and I'm paying attention to I never meditated mm -hmm. I was always you know and I, I discovered recently you know, during COVID, that I've had ADHD. I always thought I was a little lazy. But it wasn't, <laughs> it's not ADHD, it's my ADHD distracts me and I don't get everything mm -hmm, done because mm -hmm. so many things interest me. Yeah. So but the, the point I want to make being late to the party, meditation is one of the real tools. And ancient also. And ancient. Yeah that I have been doing now since COVID and I, it's been paying off big time. So I'm, I'm late to the party of meditation, but I've been doing all the other stuff. So it's all, it's yes. like the final, it's kicking me. That's a beautiful thing that we're always learning and growing. I think it, it's an age of anxiety now. So we really need to pull in we're these in the tools. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That's, that's I what... mean, just a simple breathing techniques, which you taught me when I first met you. So, yeah. So, so, I mean, like, with, but you were late to the party in terms of understanding that, but you weren't... Well, you... actually, yeah, I was into, like, Yogananda and, and, and other, other things like that. But in terms of astrology, yeah. I didn't realize that astrology was like quantum physics and that 
it's all about tapping into the quantum field, which the ancients call the Akashic Record. You know, everything old is new again. It's, it's so true because mm -hmm, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. things that are being rediscovered were known 5,000 years ago mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. Sumeria and places like that. So it, plus, it's fun. It's fun to not think that life is this thing where we're all tossed around like dice. <laughs> that, that, that there is some kind of um, divine order, divine order, divine connection. We were watching that TV show Shogun, and apparently the Japanese have a lot of words that represent these concepts that people in the West are only now coming to understand about being in the flow. Hmm. That's just from a television show. Do, do you do you know you guys have been doing this for so long? Yeah. Uh, do you ever guys do you ever get out of the flow? Do you ever oh yeah trip up? of course. That's well, where the sense of humor comes in. Also, you recognize when you're tired or when he's tired. We don't let it interfere with our She's relationship. I know. So that's like, like if I know, but so, so like if you're realizing you're tired and cranky, do you say to him, "I'm tired and cranky. Let's not do this now," or do you just? What yeah. Do you, well, but he knows because he's like <laughs> I'm usually running for the hills. <laughs> so you 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 have the perception before she tells you you get it. I think you know we have to know ourselves. So we, you know your patterns, your cycles, and if you live with it's, someone, that's you have a, to know their, theirs also. It's it's a really the real key is to yeah. understanding yourself and yeah. learning and growing as a yeah. human being. Yeah. I'm I I have discovered and I find it amazing that we can continue to learn even yeah. as at our advanced ages, <laughs> which I have to admit. Well, if you think you know it all, you don't. <laughs> no, but I, I was, it wasn't so much about thinking you know it all, just the fact that there was, there was so much, there are so many little nuances of things that you can yes. learn as you... Yes. As so you much. Are. And it's almost like there's not enough hours in the day. I mean, I think um, it's a challenge sometimes to, to know your limits or to know that you can do this tomorrow, you don't have to get it done today, but you know, we're passionate about what you do, and when you have that passion, it drives you and motivates you. And I, I think everyone, you know, some people aren't using their gifts maybe as much as they should because it feeds your soul when you do that. Well, you sometimes you need the tools that you have presented yes, to help you yes. help people uncover their gifts yes. because if, if if you're not. If you're not using your gifts, it's because you're not aware of them and you don't own them yet. And plus fear. Look, fear is the biggest... Well, it's a big destroyer. There's, there's, uh, it's like we go back to the Course in Miracles. Okay? Mm -hmm. And and the Course in Miracles all teaches... All, is every choice is... Or, or fear. fear. Yes. And nothing nothing is in between. Yeah. And, and every emotion that comes up for us it f is falls into one of yes. those places. And when the fear comes up, you've got to navigate. All these tools that you have help us navigate yes. away from the fear into a more positive because place. Because there are old things. There are old wo wounds and traumas. And, you know, sometimes they're so buried. But, you know, you, you shed light on them and share them and look at them from a different perspective. It's very healing. I mean, creativity is... Is the healer. Yeah, I shared with you, I don't know if you were at the, uh, the author's night, that from the meditation as the final kind of thing that I'm putting into my metaphysical toolkit or whatever you <laughs> yeah. want to call it. Yeah, I never used the tool is, of med yeah. meditation. It. That it actually has been like the, the key that made all the other things work yeah. beautifully. It was like yeah. the one thing that was missing in my journey, even though I was conscious and all these other things, mm -hmm. I didn't use that meditation to help help me. Yeah. It's been well, a meditation and visualization is, is used, especially by superior quality athletes. We have a Olympian who lives next door to us, a former Olympian. Right. And when we asked, I asked him, I said, did you ever visualize before you do it all the time? Anyone who's really good at a sport visualizes. So, and that comes from meditation as well, because it, it comes unbidden. In but meditation. you have to try it to see how it works. So, we're always telling people, you know, just try to pick a card. You might not believe in it, but see what it, how you respond to it. Be what open. It, yeah. Just be open. The same with trying, you know, breathing exercises and meditation. There are different forms of it. Oh, yeah. You have to find what works for you. Exactly. Food. Just like diet, you know, what works. It's very individual. But you have to experiment. I mean, any artist knows that they'll try this brush or this kind of paint or 
until you get to the the ones that you know you love the most. Don't give up. Yeah. Just keep trying, yeah. making those, choices, yeah. and see what works. And, and all those cards are in there. <laughs> now, <laughs> now you, you you talked about your cookbook. What what did you do a cookbook? And because uh, we you, just ran into a publisher at the Authors Night, Lisa so it Sharkey came out from, maybe 2017. I think. Like what, that. So what what is so what's the focus on? Astrology based, and we collaborated with our friend who's a great chef, John Ogus, and um, we had the idea many many years ago. And our publisher said, do you have an idea? And then we said, oh, we have this cookbook idea. We took it out of the drawer. And that's important. Save all your ideas. Yes. Because you never know when the time is right. And so it goes through all the seasons. You know, it starts with spring, summer, you know, fall, winter. And all the signs have their kind of cuisine or their tastes. Or like Aries like to eat fast. They like a little spicy. They like little bits. Aquarius loves very unusual combinations of things. And chocolate mousse. <laughs> so, are you Aquarius? <laughs> so we ate so much and cooked so much. Yeah, when we made it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was very fun. And we love to challenge ourselves. Monty even took all the food photos. We yeah. learned how to do that. And, yeah. um, oh, so I, you're becoming a photographer too? Well, I've always been a photographer. <laughs> My first picture with a 35 millimeter camera was in the Whitney. But, oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I have a lot, and that's another thing, finding out, and it's in there, uh, finding out what you're lucky with, as yes. well as what you're good at. When the door is open, you know, sometimes Mondrian was a musician yeah. for many years, and it was always sort of hitting his head against the wall, and then yeah. publishing, the doors just opened wide for us, so we yeah. ran through, My but you have to know, you know, yeah, all that comes into play, what you've done before, even if it's not what you ultimately Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm like when, since I've been doing this show, I've always, I found it really interesting. A lot of very successful people became successful in different areas mm -hmm. and they really were focused on mm -hmm. initially yes. because they hit a wall yeah. and they had to recreate themselves, but they used everything, everything they, learned. they learned before yes. to, to take them to the next level. Now, you guys have... Um, we we wrestled with we're going to talk about this. That you have a documentary that a yeah. filmmaker has made on on your journey in life and all the books and things that you do. Yes. Well, a true artist, Anne Marie Serino, who's a producer of horror movies for the Japanese based on <laughs> Japanese video games. She saw us and she said, "You guys are the cutest couple in the world. I want to do a documentary about you." And it's, and it's done. Well, she's got a good. She's got a good eye. Yeah. <laughs> good, she's good, amazing. Well, she was amazing, and you know, could have gone either way. But we just all, all totally bonded. We loved her vision. We really let it be what her vision was. And I kept saying to her, "Well, what's the script? How are you going to do it?" Because we couldn't imagine. We couldn't imagine how to describe us because when we're on a podcast or something, the introduction takes the whole podcast because <laughs> we do so many things. And she crafted the story without it becoming an infomercial, which is really hard. She threaded the needle. So it's all finished at 60 minutes, and we submitted it to a local festival. So we'll see what happens with it. But we, we like it. It's we a like very it. sweet love story. It's our love story. It's, yeah, it's like hanging out with us. And, and I have one of your books on my nightstand. It's a book about relationships, and it's about how you bring love into the relationship constantly. And love, how, light, and laughter. Uh, that's it. That's the name of it. Love, <laughs> light, and laughter, yeah. which we need a lot of in this world today. And, yeah. and yeah. not just with your special other, with all the people we come in contact oh, yeah. with. Yes. That's, what, that's why I have it on the bedstand, because it reminds so me to, Thank you. you know, what you, what you do with your significant other, you can bring into the world with other people. Yes, for sure. It's true. And but that's what you do. It's, it's exactly, reaction. that's yes. exactly the quotation, that, that's all as a contapsule is what you do. Yes. You, yeah. Between the two of you, this, your loving relationship you. it manifests itself in the world. We're and having every... a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I think people sometimes worry, you know, what can I do? The world's, you know, in trouble. And, but it all comes, if, you know, if you're peaceful and loving and kind, that's the most spiritual thing you can do. And, it does carry on. It carries out in a chain reaction, and I wish more people did it as well. But well, you're gonna put them, give them the opportunity to pick it up and do <laughs> it. Yes, all this stuff where you, you know, <laughs> that's what it's the power about. of attraction. Yes, and so yeah. you you yeah, put it out there. So you get it. Yeah.
And I love when you say you're just having fun because it's. I always have so much fun when I'm with you guys. Oh, and I, I still, I, you know, I did. We did an exhibition at the Blue Heron Art Center right. we yeah. a long time ago. I still remember hanging that show and how much fun it was. When I see you two doing the thing in the fans, <laughs> I remember. That's what. right. We just got a little, oh my God, a little <laughs> and it all kind stopped. of fell into place. And I love that. Wow. So I love the sense of joy that you bring yes. to everything you guys do. It's, it's just a, a pleasure to. Be in your presence. Thank well, you. Thank you we so feel much. the same way. Thank we you. have video from that show because we have so much video from us from the seventies on. You mean yeah, from the show we did at the Blue yeah, Heron? Yeah, I found it. I we've been reviewing everything. Ah, uh, it's taken two years to do the documentary. Because uh, you you did you did. Um, we went into the small theater, the black box, and we held a night. Do you remember you did? I don't remember what you did in there. You read you. I can't remember either, but I think I saw a rat and I stood on a chair and screamed. <laughs> <laughs> it was a per it was performance art. Are you sure you're not conflating that with one of our other rat performances? Ja no, I think I remember this now, but I was, I didn't remember it. But she, <laughs> if she saw it, she would remember it. I, I ne and she, when she brings it up, I remember now. I didn't see it, but I believed her. I think we got a cat right after that. But you you also you 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 held this um um like a, a presentation in the small studio. The people came and you you know you talked about all the tools that they had available to them if they wanted to go on a spiritual journey. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, that's what we do. We make spiritual power tools, the cordless variety. <laughs> and that the, I, I brought that the mindful astrology because I well, love mindful you. astrology. It's one, one of my favorite. I dip into this one frequently, too. Thank you. It's about your, your rising sign, your moon sign, your sun sign, which are three things which are so helpful to know about somebody else and about ourselves. Somebody else. <laughs> we wish everybody wore like the name tags you get at conferences that say, hello, my name is. We wish you, you had, hello, my name is and my sun, moon, moon and rising. Talking sun. about that, well, you know what I find really interesting about it? So many people don't understand how important the rising sign yeah, is. That's they nice. all know the sun sign, but guess what? Your rising sign is so almost important. more important than the sun sign in some people, way. Because they know we're astrologers, they say, well, guess what? What I am, but you can't really because no. your rising sign. You need to know those three. Your yeah. first impression is your rising sign. Exactly. The colors you pick, how you present yourself, how you project yourself. And Monty's you... a Leo rising. I'm a Scorpio rising. Libra. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you say all the things. Don't nice fight things. around them. <laughs> That's why I'm so diplomatic. <laughs> but for parents of pre-verbal uh, pre children, it's really important to know the rising sign of your child because especially like with a Capricorn rising, they seem like everything's okay. You can load them up with responsibility when they're two or three, they can be watching the baby. No, they're still kids, but but the rising sign makes them appear older than they are. Well, Monty reads for a lot of people in private consultations by Zoom or in person. And the people find it so valuable because it tells you what the energies are but right now. It was a tool I used as a child. Yeah. And but I wanted to point it out there about the rising sign because so many people don't. We actually believe it. We're running out of time. That's because we have fun. Yes, we have so much fun. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Um, we look forward to seeing your documentary in the film festival. Thank you. Truman, come say hello to the guests. Come on, say Truman. Come on here. So My Truman comes, Truman's comes here, here the too. Whole time. Truman's here. Hello. The cutest dog. <laughs> <laughs> Which one do you want? He'll bite it. And he's taking the one on top. Okay. Change. For a change, do something you usually do in a certain way, do it in a different way. You go on a different walk, right? <laughs> <laughs> Where there's birds so. and lizards. Nice. <laughs> like Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank you.